Okay. The overwhelming... I'm going to cry. The overwhelming love that you experience through the ministry of the Holy Spirit is a little taste of heaven in the real world. And when you experience it, you want more of it. It's, 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 it's why you were born. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit gives us a foretaste of some of that. Um, and some of the best moments of my life have been moments alone through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're doing kind of like part two of what we started last week, talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Chad, talk to us about, um, depending on what your background is, so I, I was at the gym recently. And the guy came in, and uh, we were in the, the sauna at the gym, and so we're just sitting there sweating. I just finished working out or whatever, and he sits down, and he's one of those sauna talkers. You know, there's people who just sit in the sauna. Oh, man, doesn't that drive you and crazy? They're just, yeah, they're just absolutely silent. Well, he comes in, and this is like his social hour, so he's like, oh, so what would you think of the you know the football game or whatever with the, the Super Bowl that just happened? And uh, he's you know, talking about that, what's your team? And they said, oh, so what do you do? And then I'm like, oh, I'm a pastor. And then he was like, because he, he was talking about... You were you know, hoping that was going to shut it down, Yeah, you? no, well, he had already said, like, oh, Brock Purdy, you know, good Christian guy. So I was like, okay, here we go. And uh, he goes, yeah, what's your what's your job? I go, oh, I'm a pastor. And he goes, oh, man, I'm, you know, Assembly's a God hey, wait, guy. Wait a second. I had breakfast with Brock Purdy's pastor this morning. Uh-huh. And I, I didn't know that that's where he went to church. Uh-huh. And uh, it was super cool. He was telling me about the family. Yeah. That, that dude's legit, man. Yeah. Loves no, Jesus. The only reason I was kind of like, man, maybe the 49ers should win this thing is because uh, of Brock Purdy. Because of Brock Purdy. Because yeah. he also went to the same high school that my boys are going to. And All right. So I'm like, okay, yeah, it's a local guy, loves Jesus. So I was rooting for him. And then, uh, of course, my daughter's rooting for the Chiefs because Taylor Swift. But uh, anyhow, so we're talking. And uh, this guy, <laughs> Assembly's a God guy, and he starts like, yeah, you know, I, I went to your church one time. He found out, you know pastor at Sun Valley. And he's like, yeah, years ago. But he's like, yeah, I was looking for, you know, more of a, a spirit church. And one, one time I must have been preaching that weekend. Yeah, it must have been you for sure. Because he didn't recognize me. So I'm just going to assume it was you. But yeah, he. so we, we get to talking and all that. But there's kind of this, this split. And you mentioned this before that happened within the church where there were some churches that were more charismatic. And, and charismatic, uh, the the core of that is is spirit and, and that there's a, a spirit element of uh, the Holy Spirit healing and people speaking in tongues and uh, different expressions of worship. And so those people went, hey, let's go farm our own church over here. And then some other people went, you know what? We don't necessarily have that same experience or we're we're more about let's just study the Bible and understand the Greek and the Hebrew. So we're going to go form a church over here. And then these people went, well, I, I view the scripture this way. And so then they split up and they went into, you know, two different denominations. And and over here on the spirit side, they went, well, I, I think that speaking in tongues is just for private prayer language. And some people go, no, I think we should have that in the worship experience. So they split up. And after a while, you had all of these different denominations and different expressions of what God is doing in the church. And, and so here we are on this journey of going, how do we bring all of this back together to where it's word and spirit and understanding that the Holy Spirit, that when Jesus walked this earth, people were healed. Uh, there was that transformation. When God interacts with a broken world, uh, oftentimes we get a glimpse into heaven where he repairs what's been broken by sin. He yeah. repairs what's been broken by sickness and death and sorrow. And that continues to happen today. So what what has been your experience as you've kind of been on your journey of, of going, okay, no, God still heals people. Like when we pray, uh, sometimes God works through that, and there's this little intersection between the divinity of God and the perfection of heaven and our broken world where he heals and he gives us a glimpse into heaven, and, and he does that to draw people to him. What's What's been your experience with healing and, and kind of your journey with that? So, yeah, I, I grew up um, in a tradition— that um, the term, the theological term, is cessationist. Mm -hmm. and Meaning so, cease. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it means that the gifts of the Spirit have stopped. Mm. Um, there's an umbrella term above that called dispensationalism, 
that God works in certain times, uh, certain ways, but then he'll not work that way anymore. And it's a different season or um, different time in church history. And so, <coughs> so sensationists believe, cessationists, excuse me, believe that um, the gifts stop basically after the New Testament times. Mm-hmm. That God did that through the Holy Spirit to give legitimacy to the church, but then we don't need that anymore because we have the Bible. Uh, the only problem with that is uh, the Bible talks about these things. Mm-hmm. And the Bible talks about these things, yes, in that day and time, but there's also not just descriptive passages of Scripture. There's prescriptive passages of Scripture mm-hmm. about praying in the Spirit yeah. and about laying on hands and praying for people so that they might be healed. And so when you read the Bible, you have to ask, is this a description of what was happening during that time or or is this instruction from the apostles Mm -hmm. is this a prescription for all time. And there are prescriptive passages about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And yet I was raised cessationist. And so the first experience, I may have, I may have told this on the podcast before, I don't recall, but my first experience was I I was a youth pastor in a church that was more cessationist. Mm -hmm. Uh, We didn't talk about healings. We we didn't pray and ask God for those things. Uh, But a man had a, a brain tumor And he asked for healing because he found this passage in the book of James. If you're sick, call the elders of the church to come anoint you with oil Mm -hmm. and to pray for you so so that, you know, you might be healed because the prayer of a righteous man, powerful, effective. And uh, that passage talks about physical healing as well as healing in your soul and from depression, those kinds of things. So he reads this passage, um, even though I'm like, 25. Mm-hmm. I'm on staff at the church, so I'm I'm considered, you know, one of the leaders as a youth pastor. And so, um, okay, we go and pray. And I'm like, well, this is different. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we put a little oil on his head. We're just doing what the Bible says. And we lay hands on him. You know, it's like a moment at a basketball game where everybody's got their hand on the ball. That's mm-hmm. like what I'm thinking when we're doing this because it was new for me. And we just, with childlike faith, prayed and asked that that God would heal him. Mm-hmm. Um, and a few days later, he goes to the doctor and the tumor has shrunk significantly. And then a week or two later, it was gone. Mm-hmm. And God healed him. And I'm going, this is amazing. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. why are we not doing, you know, more of this, right? Yeah. And and then I was like, why am I surprised? Mm. Like, I, we laid hands on him. We did exactly what the Bible says. I believe the Bible, but I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit's the one that healed him. And 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 why are we not doing more of that? And then and then some time went on. And um, when I first came to Sun Valley, I don't know if I've told you this story. This guy came. He had an issue with his knee. And again, I hadn't been taught these things. I actually was taught the opposite. And so I thought, well, maybe that was a one-off. And then I, I, this guy came and he had an issue with his knee and he was like, would, would you guys pray that, you know, Jesus would heal my knee? And we did. And he was healed. Mm-hmm. And so I'd been on this journey kind of, I think maybe God still does these things. But then at the same time, in all honesty, I'm watching TV preachers mm-hmm. And I'm going, I'm pretty sure that's a load of crap. Making a spectacle of it. And, oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, crowds of people falling down and things things that I don't really understand, but at the same time seem to be sensationalized. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I'm like, what what's reality here? Um, and I had, I had chosen to, during my journey on different occasions, go to very charismatic churches, and I just thought they were weird. Mm-hmm. People running around and... There was laughing and, you know, tambourines and people falling down. And I'm like, this is weird. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what to do with all of that. Yeah. Were you going to say something? No, I just, I'm, I'm smiling because I'm picturing in my head, like the different experiences. And you can walk into a dozen different churches and have a dozen totally different worship experiences and ranging from, you know, wow, that was a impressive production to, you know, quiet acoustic to a choir to a organ to a just chaos and everything in between and and yet we call those church yeah and yeah, yeah. well what i'm talking about when i was like this is weird and i don't i don't know if this is legit mm-hmm. was was a chaos church yeah right so 
a few years ago, um, you and I went to London, mm-hmm. and it was on a Tuesday, Wednesday night. Uh, my wife is from the UK, so I'm familiar with British culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's post-Christian. Um, I have been told by relatives um, that live in the UK that, you know, if you believe in Jesus, you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, well, let's talk about it. Well, no, we can't talk about it. <laughs> so, um, And it was on a Tuesday, Wednesday night. It's raining because it's London. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's raining. And there was this Anglican church, Church of England, that we were at. And there were hundreds of young adults lined up to get in this church. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is going on? And it was amazing. It was beautiful, yeah. right? I'm talking like old school looking church. And there was this ministry that we do now here at Sun Valley called Alpha. But it was this conference and I was seeing it happen. And what was happening is in this Anglican church, so high church tradition, right? Mm-hmm. Robes, the whole deal yep. was that tradition. Um, Westminster Abbey is Church of England, Anglican. So I'm realizing that um, this church, the, the reason there was such life in it while churches all around are dying in in the UK was because they gave the credit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they taught us about the Holy Spirit and and some things that I knew were in the scriptures, but never paid attention to or submitted to. And so I need to repent of that, that maybe the tradition I grew up in had it wrong. Mm -hmm. And then Robert, I have an experience with the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and I feel his presence and his love and his, um, like, like tangibly his presence. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm even going to use the word warmth. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, there was a prayer time and, and, and there were gifts of the spirit that I saw practice, uh, words of knowledge, prophetic words. Um, and I was part of that. Yeah. I, I saw a couple and I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, um, go, go speak this over their life. And as soon as I said what the Holy Spirit told me to say, they both started bawling. Mm-hmm. It was something that I could not possibly know, mm-hmm. but but God knew. Yeah. And he was loving them in that moment through me. And it was just, it was a beautiful thing. And so I come back home and I'm thinking, I think God wants Sun Valley to be a word and spirit church. Mm-hmm. And so we've been on this journey for a while, but that's been my background. So cessationist, those gifts are no longer there. I'm not that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I really desire our church to be a word and spirit church. So talk to us about why why would we and why do we practice this prayer of come Holy Spirit? So if yeah. the Bible teaches, hey, we put our faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit moves in, the Holy Spirit's already here. Yeah. Why why pray come Holy Spirit? Okay, so let's break this down real quick and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it quickly. And depending on your church background, you may or may not track with me. Mm-hmm. Um we receive, here at Sun Valley, we believe you receive the Holy Spirit when you say yes to Jesus. Mm-hmm. So when you trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior, Savior and leader of your life, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus moves in. It's a seal. It's a deposit guaranteeing yeah. our inheritance. And, and it happens yep. upon receiving Jesus. Um, and, and we're talking about this on the weekends, and I give verses of Scripture for that. Mm-hmm. So if, if you want, you can listen to those sermons. Um, the Bible also talks about a baptism of the Holy Spirit, okay? At Sun Valley, here's what we believe, because different denominations believe different things. Some people believe that's a different thing that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. And um, what, what I believe is that you receive the Holy Spirit when you give your life to Jesus. The baptism of the Spirit is, is something that you choose to do. You, you choose to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you want to keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. And baptism, if you're like, okay, what is baptism? Baptism literally means to dunk under. And yeah. so you do that with water. Jesus demonstrated that. He modeled that. And then he taught us that's what we do. And it's a picture of this new life where we're just submerged in water. The old us is dead and gone. And it's a new us. It's this rebirth, this re- reborn moment. And the Bible talks about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is like a dunking under, like a filling, like a submerging ourselves in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the Bible teaches, okay, you say you said yes to Jesus, mm-hmm. okay, and you're to be baptized with water. That's your public profession of uh-huh. faith. But then there's a, there's a baptism of, of the Spirit. Um, and the baptism of the Spirit um, is not just a one-time thing. The baptism of the Spirit, uh, we, we believe, uh, is, is something that we invite the Spirit to do. And so, for, for example, um, I can talk all day long in my prayer, mm-hmm. but prayer is meant to be communication with God. 
And so when I pray and I say, God, what do you want to say to me? And I'm just quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing to give the Holy Spirit the microphone. Yeah. Right. Come Holy Spirit is one of the most ancient prayers of the church. It's something that early church fathers would pray. And so when we look at um, some of those original church meetings and some of the wordings and recordings there, that's that's part of the prayer. Mm -hmm. Come Holy Spirit is a prayer that literally means come and take over. Uh, Holy Spirit, come and take charge. Mm -hmm. And so in a corporate setting, uh, it's, it's, it's just like in a private setting when I say, Holy Spirit, I want you to speak. I give you the microphone. Come Holy Spirit is, I want you to take over. Yeah. And so even though I'm preaching, I want you to be preaching through me, right? Uh, we put you in charge. One of the things we do here at the church is we turn our, our palms up. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So why, why the posture of, of palms up? It's a posture of receiving. It's, it's me saying my arms are not crossed. Mm -hmm. You know, my arms are open to you. And so physically we're saying, Holy Spirit, come upon me. What do you have for me today? Mm -hmm. And so come Holy Spirit is a, is a takeover, right? So I'm going to explain it this way, and, and perhaps um, this will help. So Jesus um, is the Son of God. He was born with the Spirit. Um, you and I are not born with the Spirit. Yeah, you we're talk, spiritually dead when we're born. You talked about mm -hmm. this a few weeks ago in the Rooted series. Um, we're born spiritually dead. Ephesians says we're dead in our transgressions and sins. It's talking about spiritual death, okay? So when you give your life to Jesus, Ephesians says your, your spirit is made alive because the Holy Spirit quickens you. That's, that's uh, mm -hmm. King James talk. Mm -hmm. I love that. Quickens you. And so the Holy Spirit moves in, um, really wraps itself up with your spirit. So now there's a spiritual reality in your life that did not exist prior to your receiving Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is different. Jesus is different. Jesus is not the son of Adam. Mm -hmm. He is not born with a dead spirit. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God said, you will surely die. They died spiritually. And every human being born since then is born dead spiritually until they give their life to Jesus, until God moves in. Jesus is different. Jesus is not the son of Adam. Uh, Jesus is the son of God. Okay. And so he's born with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus never sinned. Okay. Which means... Was the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, was the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, always evident in Jesus' life? Yes. Well, yes, because he was always full of the Spirit, mm -hmm. because he always was surrendered to the Spirit. He was born with the Holy Spirit, and he never broke that fellowship. Um, and so Jesus's character was perfect. He always had the character of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Okay. All, all of that fruit. I might've missed a couple Goodness. of this, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Galatians 5.22. And yet before he starts his ministry, there's this language at his baptism. So he's always full of the spirit because mm -hmm. he never sinned, but at his baptism, God speaks, you are my beloved son, you know, I love you, I'm well pleased with you. And the spirit comes upon him uh, like a dove. It doesn't say it was a dove, it says like a dove. Mm -hmm. So that language there is, so he was full of the Holy Spirit, but then the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And then he's led into the desert and he's tempted and he does the battle with the devil. But upon the Holy Spirit coming upon him, his ministry begins, and there's miracles and things like that. And so, as I see Scripture, there's a filling of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that is about our character and about the fruit, and we want that every day. Mm -hmm. But in seasons of ministry or corporate worship, there's this prayer of Holy Spirit come upon us. It's different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just our character. It's we need your leadership, your guidance, and, and I'm going to use this word, your power. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why I have us turn our palms up and I pray, come Holy Spirit, because I don't want anybody to hear from me. Yeah. I, I want the Holy Spirit to be in charge as I'm speaking and teaching God's word and, and giving commentary to it. I want the Holy Spirit to be doing that and in through me. So that come Holy Spirit is a, is a come and take over. Yeah. There's a, there, there that is. That was a long explanation. No, it's, it's very helpful because there is a, 
there's a psychological impact on our what our body is doing. Like our posture sometimes informs our brain, and it informs us like, okay, this is a, a posture of receiving. It's also a posture of surrender. This is why sometimes when people are worshiping, uh, you'll see hands yeah. up. Again, it's a, it's a posture of surrender. Uh, sometimes in prayer, uh, if you're like, you know, out in public, you might not do this, but if you're, you know, at home and it's just you and you're by yourself, even to kneel into a posture of of laying down of just total submission. I mean, that's like picture somebody, you know, coming before the king, begging for mercy, then just that, okay, I, I am submitting everything to you. When I remember when I was in high school, I was longing for more of God. And I didn't know, I was in a church that was more, you know, Bible, less spirit. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm reading different things, different passages. I'm like, okay, I think I want to try praying that way. And just the posture of kneeling, you know, we talk about kneeling in prayer or, or even laying down, like there was something about that, that God began to work in my life in ways. I began to experience him in ways through prayer that I had never experienced him before. Because again, my, my posture is telling my brain like, no, it's not just like, okay, God, I trust you with this little box of my life, this little category of faith. And what do I believe in? Um, no, I trust you with my whole life. I want you to lead me in my whole life. And so sometimes we we do things, that posture is, is telling our brains. And it's also just, it's just a, a reaffirmation of what our, our heart is believing, what our minds are believing to go, okay, God, I'm submitting everything to you. I want to be filled by you. Um, and that prayer of come Holy Spirit, now we're communicating what you said, God, I desire more of you. Like, more. Come Holy Spirit. I want more of you in my life. I want to experience you. I want your leadership, your guidance. And and when we do that, and then also when we, like you said, corporate worship, enter into prayer, uh, we begin to pray, uh, we see the Holy Spirit moving through that posture, and we see the Holy Spirit moving through that that heart posture of submission, and, and God lead us, and people are healed, and they're healed physically at times. Uh, people are healed relationally. We've seen the Holy Spirit heal relationships that you would look at and go, there's no way that relationship could ever be restored, and God enters in to use your words. Jesus doesn't take sides. He takes over and, and transform relationships uh, spiritually. People that were dead, that, that pray, uh, Jesus, you are Lord, and, and I put my trust in you. They're, they're healed spiritually for all of eternity. I mean, these are, these are miracles, too, that happen all of the time, and sometimes we just get focused on the physical healing side, uh, but there's miracles in all these areas of life that God wants to restore, and He wants to redeem, and He wants to make right, and again, give us this glimpse of heaven, and it happens in all these different categories. Yeah. So that, that prayer, come Holy Spirit, I'll pray that on my own by myself, too, mm-hmm. uh, because I want to feel and sense His presence. I'm mm-hmm. literally saying, come take over my body. Mm-hmm. Come fill my mind, my soul. What do you want to show me? What do you want me to see? What do you want me to hear? What do you want me to feel? And sometimes uh, I don't I don't have much of an experience. Mm-hmm. It could be a thought comes to mind, something like that. And sometimes, frankly, Robert, it's overwhelming. Yeah, which I've experienced that too. Yeah, and I had tears streaming down my face. The wind was blowing, and I, I I remember looking down and seeing my tears blowing in the wind. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm not a crier. Like I don't. That's not a regular occurrence for me. But it was overwhelming. Um, and but to your point, that that simple prayer of "Come, Holy Spirit," if you've not just set aside time to be alone with God, for me, what I love about that prayer one, it's simple. Everybody, just by how many times we've said it on this podcast, you already have it memorized. <laughs> but mm. it focuses, and so my mind, my my issue is when I pray to God, all of a sudden I'm thinking about where am I going for lunch today, or I start praying and I start thinking about something else. My mind wanders. That simple prayer, come Holy Spirit, just brings my focus back to God, mm-hmm. and it creates enough space for me to listen. And then when my mind starts to wander again, I'll pray it again, yeah. come Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's almost a prayer of, we were talking about baptism, of, of, of come baptize me in your presence. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's like that. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just an invitation. Um, you know, it's interesting in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit comes, Pentecost. Mm-hmm. So this is 50 days after the resurrection of yeah. Jesus, because Jesus said the Holy Spirit's going to come, and he does. And there's a wind, and there's flames of fire. I mean, there's physical manifestations of the presence of God, who is the Holy Spirit. But it says people looked at that, and people were like stumbling around and mm-hmm. things like that, and they thought they were drunk. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, the Apostle Paul says, don't be uh, drunk on wine, be filled with the Spirit. By the way, that's why you call alcohol spirits. Mm. That's where that comes mm-hmm. from. Um, so sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes, um, for me, I, I'm a swayer. Mm-hmm. 
like when when I feel his presence on me, I'm doing it right now, just talking about it. Um, I'll I'll sway, mm-hmm. and so um, I, I know my wife knows when my palms are open and I'm swaying, like I'm having a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, those kinds of things are okay, they're but they're a little bit weird, yeah. and and so so somebody like me is like, what is, you know, what's happening right now? But but all of that is just relational things that the Bible talks about that we don't need to be afraid of. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Spirit is counselor, comforter, and friend. Um, that exchange is relational. Uh, there may be some power that comes with that. Mm-hmm. There may be some revelation that comes with that. But all of that is for our good. Which means you don't have to be afraid of it. I think I think for some people, because this was my journey of, like, it's so foreign and different. Yeah. I was almost afraid, like, what is going to happen if I do this? And because I'm not in control, there's a there's a little bit, for all the control freaks out there, there's a little bit of fear of that, like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen. And so if I can, to any degree, reassure you, you don't need to be afraid. God yeah. loves you, and, and he has good things for you. Well, and just to clarify, I, you're, you're not in control, but you are. Hmm. You can stop it, but you're not going to want to. Yeah, it's intoxicating, which is why I think Paul uses that illustration. Well, it okay. The overwhelming, I'm going to cry, the overwhelming love that you experience through the ministry of the Holy Spirit is a little taste of heaven in the real world. And when you experience it, you want more of it. It's, 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 it's why you were born. Mm-hmm. And so the Holy Spirit gives us a foretaste of some of that. Um, and some of the best moments of my life have been moments alone through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and I want that for everybody. And so in our church, you know, we're not going to get super creepy or weird, but we're just trying we're not, to... We're not busting out tambourines this weekend. We're not handing them out. And yeah, so, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> tambourines. But we do want to gently lead our people in being more and more open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And our church is more and more open to the Holy Spirit. Um, we have been praying healing for people. Bluntly, sometimes he heals, sometimes he doesn't. Mm-hmm. I don't understand that. I just know if we pray for healing, some people get healed. Mm-hmm. And if we don't pray for healing, nobody gets healed. Yeah. So let's pray for healing and just let God do what he's going to do. Um, and it's a mystery. Yeah. I. One last thought for me, and then Chad, if you have anything else you want to add. I, I have three teenagers now. When my daughter, when my sons, they go, hey, Dad, can we hang out? Hey, Dad, can we talk? Um, they're getting ready for bed. Hey, would you come up, say goodnight? Absolutely. It's getting more and more special, isn't it's it? It's getting more and more special, and I love that. Uh, your Heavenly Father loves it when you say, God, would you come hang out with me? Yeah. Uh, be with me. Fill me. Yeah. Uh, he loves that. Don't be afraid of that. Yeah. Why don't you pray for us, Robert, and ask God to give us wisdom by his spirit Yeah, yeah, about these things. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. God, we want more of you. Would you fill us, even in this moment, with more of your presence? God, thanks that you love us. Thanks that every person who's hearing this right now, listening to this right now, God, you you love them more deeply than they could ever imagine. God, I, I pray that we would we would continue to grow in our understanding of, of a love that surpasses knowledge, that we would experience it that we would submit to the flow of your love in our lives and through our lives into the lives of others. And that Holy Spirit, you would minister to us and you would minister to those around us by your power. And God, that we would be open and willing to what you want to do through our lives into the lives of others. And so come Holy Spirit, lead us as, as your church. Help us to represent you to the world around us. Until, Jesus, you call us home or you return, uh, come Holy Spirit, may, may the ways of heaven 
the kingdom. May that be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.